me the most about the CAF-2 deployment because we, we had done CAF-1 so we built out over a hundred thousand homes using CAF-1 and as we got to CAF-2 we started to get some interesting interaction with the municipalities, counties. Um, it kind of seems that everyone has their hand out you know uh, I won't say the specific area but there's an area that the water department found a law that went back to 1953 that makes us post a $10,000 bond every time we want to drill underneath, uh, you know, one of their water lines, which, you know, we built in the same area many CAF-1 homes and never was in question. So, um, in another state, they changed the laws about what, what we could put in the right-of-way. So, it's interesting as we're trying to expand broadband service to customers that other agencies in a state or municipality are really, I think, I would just call them impediments to getting broadband deployed to customers. So that, that's been, you know, kind of surprising that we're not all trying to get to the, you know, the same end goal. Um, I think things that are the most challenging it's a it's a large project and as you know there are many companies that took CAF2 I know there's Windstream, AT&T, CenturyLink, all of us took CAF2 uh, so we've put a real I would say strain on our suppliers to everything from fiber to D-slams to connectors any piece of that change everybody knew it was kind of coming but still you know people wanted orders in hand before they were able to do that. And even with our own in company, we have internal conflicts between, you know, what I would call business as usual jobs that we have to do and CAF jobs or other things that we want to do. It's the same resources that we're trying to leverage to do all those jobs. So that's, that's a challenge to run a super large project with a lot of competing uh, time for resources and, and people uh, that you have to work with. I think the most rewarding thing, I'll, I'll just sum it up in a story. So in the middle of Nevada, one of our properties, we deployed um, CAF out to this area and we went to turn up the first uh, D-slam in that area and we took the first order from a customer in that area. And when we went out to turn up the customer, the lady that was there had baked homemade cookies for the techs because she was so happy to have broadband service finally. Well, there's really three reasons. First of all, uh, you probably remember that just recently we were acquired three large states from Verizon landline business in Texas, California, and Florida. So part of this is bringing the cultures together of our different, from different companies and, and making the teams work. So this is really, this was a great opportunity to get the engineering teams together for the first time. They had certainly, you know, probably talked to people on the phone and everything else, but they've never really, you know, saw them face to face. And it's always much easier, I think, to work with someone once you meet them, you know, go out and maybe have a glass of wine with someone and understand them a little bit better. Um, I just think that that helps the whole working relationship and it helps them, you know, bring our cultures together. Because what we're really trying to do in Frontier is create not a Frontier culture, not, you know, a Verizon culture. We're trying to take the, the best of both those cultures and put them together to have, you know, really form a new company. Because we, we doubled the size, so it it's essentially is, you know, a new company. I think the second reason was really here at the show. This show has 
really grown and it's it's broadened and I think we heard it this morning in Amir's talk that he gave from you know strictly outside plant to really more holistically about the telecommunications industry so there's a lot of new technologies here you know we're all challenged with just going back to the CAF example of being able to deploy our networks more cost effectively cheaper quicker faster and here at the show there are a lot of vendors that can help us do this so bringing in all the leaders within the engineering department and give them a chance to interact with the vendors here on the floor um, is you know very uh, you know I, I think benef beneficial for us and then the, you know the whole educational aspects of this because as we're here one of the things that we really have is starting our planning for 2017 and so at the end of the show actually a number of people here are staying here to just kind of you know really leverage what we've learned because next the last couple of days into our plan for 2017. I think my friend Jack's right. You know, um, it, it's really, I think, it, uh, at least at my level, it's about setting the, the next generation up. And it's really about coaching and mentoring people for success so they'll be successful going forward. It's about providing them the opportunities to go forward. And then I think it's also about putting them in situations where they're outside their comfort zone to give them a chance to react to st stressful situations. And um, with all that's going on in, in the industry today, with our build out of Connect America, with our acquisition, we've got a lot of opportunities for people.